Now, reports from Russia suggest that Gazprom has set up its own private army and is sending recruits to fight in Ukraine. The state oil firm has long employed people with military backgrounds to guard its assets around the world, but industry observers claim an armed unit employed by Gazprom is now active on the front line. That appears to be confirmed by the head of Russia's paramilitary Wagner group, Yevgeny Prigozhin, in an interview as well. Well, let's discuss this further with energy analyst Mikhail Krutikin from Rus Energy. Thanks a lot for joining us on DW Business. Uh, Mikhail, is it really conceivable that Gazprom is sending people to the front line in Ukraine to fight? Yes, this is the situation. In February, the Russian Prime Minister, Mr. Mishustin, uh, ordered uh, two companies of the Gazprom Group, Gazprom itself and its oil arm, Gazprom Neft, to form something which uh, is called uh, uh, volunteer battalions out of the people who are uh, serving in the paramilitary forces of Gazprom and Gazprom Neft. And uh, those forces are safeguarding the infrastructure of Gazprom, critical infrastructure, which is pipelines, uh, compressor stations, producing sites, and so on. And uh, so there are people who can handle arms. And in view of the deficit of uh, uh, soldiers on the Ukrainian front, the government decided to use uh, those people as uh, volunteers. Uh, and uh, already we see that some of the prisoners of war in Ukraine are members of those units. So we already seem to have some evidence that this is something that, that is happening, that, that Gazprom employees as such are fighting on behalf of Russia. Yes, and even some members of other uh, so-called private armies, such as uh, Mr. Prigozhin's army, they are complaining that the uh, well training and uh, military qualities of those uh, paramilitary uh, personnel are not up to the mark. And uh, sometimes they just retreat from the front lines, uh, letting the Ukrainians attack and, uh, well, it seems that there is not enough uh, cooperation between uh, different forces on the front. Uh, one of the questions that springs to mind here is, so Gazprom is state-owned, the army is state-run, so why does there need to be an additional, effectively state-owned military force fighting alongside the army? Well, it is becoming more and more difficult for the regular army to get more conscripts uh, through mobilization or the regular conscription. And, uh, uh, well, the government decided to employ the people who can handle arms and who are officially members of paramilitary units of state-controlled companies. This is the only reason for such urgent uh, action, is the shortage of personnel on the front. There are reports of these personnel that, that are working for Gazprom suggesting that they... they were told that they would be going to Ukraine to guard, as they used to when working for Gazprom, to, to guard oil and gas assets, and they've ended up on the front line. Uh, is there likely to be any truth in that? Yes, I believe it is possible because Gazprom uh, is handling some of the compressor stations and uh, pipelines which are located uh, within the occupied territories in Ukraine. And, uh, well, uh, formally, officially, they also need some people to uh, guard that in a critical infrastructure, even though it has not been used for quite a, quite a long while. But uh, it could be just a pretext. The people are sent uh, to fight uh, at the, well, uh, where the regular army and some private armies, such as people from Chechnya or Prigozhin's uh, private army, are already fighting. So what does this situation say about the difficulties that Russia is having finding personnel for its fight in Ukraine? Yes, this, uh, this seems to be a very big crisis in mobilization and uh, uh, the number of the personnel which is available to fill in the gaps 
after uh, unsuccessful attacks on uh, Ukrainians, uh, well, has to be filled in with uh, so somebody who can, uh, who know how to fight and who know how to handle arms. And it seems to be a real uh, shortage of people. And, uh, well, Gazprom and Gazprom Neft uh, appear to be natural resources of such uh, new personnel. We're also seeing some reports that groups beyond just um, Gazprom, you know, Russian state-run organizations and otherwise, setting up paramil paramilitary groups, um, not necessarily in relation to, you know, the war in Ukraine, but actually for what might come afterwards. I mean, what is it that they're anticipating? Yes, this is, if you look at it from a longer term perspective, you see that, yes, there are some uh, very rich people in Russia who are forming their own uh, private armies, such as uh, Andrei uh, Bokarev, one of the co-owners of the Kalashnikov uh, arm uh, building concern, or Konstantin Malofeyev, they already have their own paramilitary groups. They are not engaged at the front line, but, uh, well, they are in the formation stage. And uh, the observers of the business community in Russia believe that such armies are being created for the future. Uh, those people um, expect the Russian state, uh, so-called vertical of power of Mr. Putin, to uh, well to suffer under the pressure of economic, social, and military defeats, and they expect that uh, under the most uh, dramatic scenarios there could be a civil war in Russia and a chaotic situation when uh, such private armies would be needed to defend the interests of some very rich people, business elite, in some territories, uh, business uh, uh, well producing sites, manufacturing uh, factories, and so on. And uh, this is, in fact, is uh, an anticipation of a chaotic situation in Russia. Maybe the uh, downfall of the Russian uh, of Russia as a state. Wow. So, in just such a, a power struggle and a military power struggle, would Vladimir Putin be expecting Gazprom to be on his side and offering him support or otherwise? Well, basically, Gazprom is a private company of Mr. Putin because the situation is as well. Uh, Putin issues orders, strategic orders to Gazprom, uh, which are not commercial. For example, to abandon the marketing uh, niche in Europe, and then uh, the management of Gazprom obeys. And the board of directors, the council of directors, cannot do anything because it acts as a rubber stamp for Putin's decisions. And Putin, uh, yes, can consider the uh, military formation within Gazprom as his own private army. OK, Mikhail Krutikin, founder of Rus Energy. Thank you so much for bringing us your insights on what is a fascinating story. Thank you very much.